everyone! Happy New Year! Welcome to 2012. That's a mouthful. Um, it is a new year, a new month. It's really cold outside. Winter has finally hit Indiana. There's snow on the ground and ponds are frozen over. <sighs> I miss summer. So since it is not only a new uh, month, new year, but also a new month. It is time for monthly favorites. In this case, it is my favorites for the month of December. Um, I've got not a whole lot of stuff, and it's a mishmash of stuff. Some beauty stuff, not some not. Um, but uh, this is the stuff that I either got or found or whatever for the month of December, and. Uh, really enjoy and want to share with you guys. So let's get started. The first product is a beauty product and it is the uh, one and only Argan Oil Hydrating Mask. So this is for your hair. Uh, it's just a uh, kind of a, it's got the, about the consistency of conditioner, um, but it comes from, it uses the same products that come from the uh, Moroccan uh, Moroccan argan, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, argan trees. If you guys are familiar with Moroccan oil, um, which is used in a lot of salons, um, it smells wonderful. I've had Moroccan oil used on my hair before, um, but it just makes your hair really, really soft and really shiny. But Moroccan oil is very, very expensive. I've seen it go for like $50 for a tiny little bottle. Granted, you don't have to use a whole lot so that bottle lasts you a while, but still. $50 for a little bottle of hair product, kind of crazy unless you got that kind of money, which I don't. Um, so this I got actually at Sally's Beauty Supply. Um, and you just push, put this in your hair in a shower um, after you shampoo it. You can use this um, after you shampoo and condition or use it as your conditioner like I do. Um, I use this uh, about once a week. Um, if you saw my last favorites, the Aussie 3 Minute Miracle, I also use about once a week in lieu of my normal conditioner. So I kind of alternate between the two. But this smells just like the Moroccan oil. And you just use just a little bit in your hand, put it in your hair, let it sit for like five minutes. Um, while it's sitting, you can shave your legs or whatever. Um, and then rinse it out, and it leaves your hair super, super soft. Um, and it smells really good too. So I I love this. Um, I'm sure you could find something similar if you don't have a Sally's Beauty Supply. Um, I don't know if this brand is carried anywhere else, like Walmart or whatever. But I'm sure you can find something similar. But it's just the uh, it's just a hydrating mask with the argan oil, the Moroccan argan oil in it. So highly highly recommend it. The next product is. From Bath and Body Works, it is the Jingle Bellini Shower Gel. And I actually got this from uh, my husband's parents as part of my Christmas gift. But it smells so good. Bellini is actually a cocktail. Um, it's a very citrusy uh, type cocktail. Um, so that's exactly what this smells like. It's very, very citrusy, but it smells really, really good. Um, this is from... Bath & Body Works Signature Collections. I don't know if you can get this af all year long or if you can only get this during the holidays. Um, but it smells really, really, really good. It's got peach, apricot, and... Uh, I think that's it as far as the citrus goes. But it's a very, very sweet smell. So if you don't like sweet stuff or you don't want to smell um, like, you know like a fruit cocktail. Probably don't want to use this, but if you like the sweeter smelling stuff, um, I highly recommend this because it smells really, really good. I got the uh, the uh, matching lotion too, so you can use the, the lotion after you shower to continue that smell. Uh, next thing is actually a new favorite snack of mine, and it is popcorn. And, yeah, I know you can get popcorn just about anywhere at the grocery store. But this actually comes from a company called Popcornopolis. Um, I don't know how many locations. I don't know how world, not worldwide, but um, how spread out they are 
throughout the U.S. I know they have several locations here in Indiana, um, but they do um, gourmet popcorn um, with different flavors. I've got uh, one here which is sour cream and onion, and another one here which is kettle corn, and then I had another one that was cheddar, um, but I ate all of it already. <laughs> it's really good. Um, but they do all sorts of flavors. They have, um, I know during the holiday season they get some of the like specialty flavors. Like they had one that was like, uh, like chocolate and pumpkin or something. And they've got like cupcake and all sorts of flavors. Um, and then of course you have your normal, more typical flavors like your caramel corn, that kind of thing. Um. But they have a lot of lot of flavors, and the popcorn is really, really good too. It's uh, gluten free and has no trans fats in it. And the popcorn they use is just really good because they're real big, like fluffy puffs, so they hold the flavor really well. So um, if you have one of these near you, the Popcornopolis, I highly, highly recommend trying it out because it's a really really good snack if you're just you know, looking for something to munch on. The next thing is a book. Um, I actually don't have the actual book because it's on my Kindle, which you guys have seen before, one of my other monthly favorites. But the book is called The Vault of Walt, written by a guy named Jim Corcus. And it's about Walt Disney, but it is not your... Um, typical like biography type book where you know talk about when he was a kid and then when he grew up and you know, his teenage years and then starting the company and blah 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 and then married and you know eventually get to the end of his life. This is more of a almost a collection of short stories that have to do either with Walt Disney or the company or the parks. Um, Jim, I don't know Jim personally but I know people who do and um I've heard interviews with Jim before and have I've heard Jim talk about uh, Disney uh, before both Walt and the company and he is literally a treasure trove of information. He has so much information about Walt and the company and the parks in his head either from when he was uh, an employee of the Disney company or people he's interviewed and he knows I swear, it seems like he knows everything about everything. You could ask him, you know, to tell you a story about the Carousel Progress, and he could probably give you five stories about it. He is just uh, a treasure trove of information, and this book is really, really good because um, he did a lot of uh, interviews uh, writing the book. It's not all just his personal information. He interviewed former Imagineers, former Disney employees, um, people that had been in Disney films, um, Disney's uh, Walt's uh, daughter, uh, Diane, uh, Disney Miller. Um, he's interviewed her. Um, so he's just, it's, he did a lot of in-depth research when writing this book and the stories I can almost guarantee are probably not stories that you would hear or read about anywhere else in any other book just because some of the stuff is somewhat obscure and it's just not the stuff that people tend to uh, touch upon when writing uh, books and things about um, Walt Disney and the, the Disney company. So if you're a, a Disney fan I highly recommend it if you're even just a fan about, uh, if you're just a fan of reading, you know, like non-fiction biographical type books uh, about fa like famous people, um, I'd recommend it too. You can get it on the Kindle, I'm sure you can probably get it on the Nook too if you have a, an e-reader and then you can also get it in uh, actual physical book form too if you like off of Amazon. Next thing is actually uh, the thing that I bought for my husband for Christmas and it is a video game. It is called Rocksmith and um, I got it for the, the Xbox 360 because um, that's what's attached to the TV here behind me. Um, but if you guys are familiar with things like Guitar Hero, 
um, those kinds of games where um, you use like the, I don't want to say fake instruments, but the um, video game styled instruments that you would use with a gaming system. Um, what sets Rocksmith apart is you can use your actual guitar. Um, if you have a electric guitar, um, it comes with a, a cable to plug from the guitar into the gaming system and you can use your actual uh, guitar as your game controller. Um, you still have to use a regular controller to go through like the menu and stuff, but to play the actual game you use an actual guitar. Um, which I think is really, really cool, because if you want to learn how to play guitar, um, this probably isn't going to teach you exactly how to play guitar, because um, the gameplay, it, you know, it's color-coded which string you're supposed to be plucking and that kind of thing. So it's not going to teach you how to read music, uh, per se, but if you want to get the familiar, if you want to get familiar with holding a t guitar and plucking the strings or strumming the strings and um, the, uh, you know, moving your fingers around on the strings. Um, this is this is a good game to play. Uh, um, the next two things, uh, I don't have my laptop in front of me, otherwise I'd show you on my laptop, so I'm going to have to use my phone. Um, but two things that are really, really have gotten um, a lot of my attention um, back in December, especially since I was on winter break from school, so I had some free time. Um, were a couple things um, online, one of them being Pinterest, which I know Pinterest has been around for a while, but I didn't get, I wasn't able to get an account up until a couple weeks ago. Um, I got on the waiting list and was waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally my husband managed to get in um, via his mother, and then he sent me an invite, so I've been able to get on. But oh my goodness, I spend so much time on Pinterest. It is, and I'm sure some of you people probably too, do too, so you can understand um, what it is. Um, for those of you who don't know what Pinterest is, it's kind of, if you know what, I don't know the best way to describe it, you go on, and you can go on to Pinterest itself, and there's you can do these things called boards, and you can theme them. So, like, I have one for fashion, one for food, one for um, home decor ideas, and you can go through and you virtually pin um, pictures of things you like online. It's almost like saving without actually having to save the picture. It saves it for you on this website. So you're not having to like download and put stuff in folders on your computer and that kind of thing. Um, but what you can also do is you can get the um, pinning mechanism or what you want to call it and put it on your browser bar so you can go to other websites like food gawker or style.com and whenever there's a picture you can just hit the uh, button on your browser to pin and you can pin it from there and then it'll pin it to whatever board on your Pinterest account so because um, I know before you know if I found stuff I liked um, I either had to save the URL or try to remember where it is I found it, or download the picture and putting it onto my computer and putting it into folders, and there you kind of forget about it um, after a while. Um, so this way, anytime you log into Pinterest, all your boards are right there. Um, plus, you can follow people, um, like, like if you have friends that are on Pinterest, you can follow them so you can see what they're pinning and you can share things. Um, but it's very, very cool. Um, and a lot easier to save um, information, at least pictures. It doesn't really work well for um, text, um, but if there's pictures, it'll it'll pin it. Um, but it's a really, really easy way to uh, save things you find online and be able to reference them later because they're all right there in one singular location. Another thing that I am really, really spending probably way too much time playing with is Words with Friends. <laughs> Which I know that Words with Friends has been around for a while too. I know Alec Baldwin just made uh, headlines a couple weeks ago for refusing to turn off his iPad while on an airplane because he was playing Words with Friends. Um, but um, I finally downloaded it onto my phone 
and I've been playing non-stop ever since. I think I have like four or five games going with friends right now. Um, it's essentially Scrabble is what it is. You get letters and you have to form words and there's certain tiles. If you, know, if you put the word over certain boxes, you get double points or triple points or whatever. Um, for familiar Scrabble, it's essentially the same thing, except it's online. Um, and it's a bit more passive because this way, you know, I can put in a word and then the person I'm playing with can come and do their turn whenever they get the get the time. Um, and the same thing, you know, if somebody makes a play and, you know, I'm stuck at work or something and it's hours before I see it, no biggie. It'll sit there and wait. You know, so depending on, you know, how soon we can go to make our moves, a game could last a couple days, it could last a couple weeks. It just depends. Um, and you can do multiple games with multiple people. I know I've got, you know, like I said, I'm playing like five games right now, and I think uh, two of them are with the same person. I started a game with her, and then she started a second game with me. Uh, the last favorite I want to show you is actually a Christmas present I got for my husband. Um, on my blog, I posted um, right around Thanksgiving, I posted my uh, Christmas wish list of uh, things that I would like for Christmas and this was pretty close to the top of my list. Um, it's a it's a book and I'm sure you're like, well Rachel you have a Kindle, why would you ask for a book? And for the most part the Kindle is great for books that just use text but a book like this definitely needs to be um, had in physical form because I don't think this would translate well to the Kindle at all. Um, but here it is. If I can lift it up because <laughs> it is heavy. It is Harry Potter page to screen the complete making journey. This encompasses the entire Harry Potter film saga. This thing is huge. It is pages is it? It is like 700 something pages. No, 500. 532 pages. But it is full color. Oh, look who I managed. <laughs> Random page, but look who I managed to turn up. Snape, <laughs> my favorite. Um, but it, uh, it covers everything from the initial, um, the initial, uh, idea to, to turn the books into, um, movies to casting to costuming to set design it's got anything and everything you would want to know about the Harry Potter films um, it's got pictures it's got concept art it's got I mean like right here this is the let's see set photos and concept art for the Yule Ball scene in uh, the Goblet of Fire, um, but this this book is so cool. Um, there's a lot of text too, so I mean if you're gonna, there's definitely a lot to read, um, but uh, there's a lot a lot of pictures too. Um, I think there's Hagrid. It's a section here about the characters themselves. You know, you got Hagrid, you got Robbie Coltrane there dressed as Hagrid, and you got some drawings of what Hagrid would might look like on on screen so if you're a Potter fan like I am uh, I highly highly recommend this book especially if you're a fan of the movies not just the books because um, this is definitely this is just about the movies not necessarily the books um, but it is a big, big book it is expensive um, I, I probably wouldn't have bought it for myself so I'm very very thankful that my husband bought it for me for Christmas but I love this book. I'm slowly making my way through it. I think I'm still in the first section where they're just talking about how they're going to adapt the books into films and the uh, the casting process and all of that. But I look forward to uh, to uh, eventually reading the entire thing. Um, it'll take some time because this doesn't travel well because it's so big. So I have to read it here at home. It's not like I could take it with me when I go somewhere. Um, but if you're if you're like I said, if you're a Potter fan, highly recommend this book. Just be prepared because it is huge and very, very heavy. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I certainly enjoy sharing some of my favorite things with you guys. Um, if you like what you see, please hit the, the thumbs up button below. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button above. And I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye.